Hi guys and welcome back to another Dr. Ace video and today we're going to be playing Ride 4 and we're going to be using Troy Bayless' Ducati 996 from 2001 from Imola. Now I do believe I'm not using Imola today but uh, this was part of the career mode objective that I really needed to get done and therefore we're going to be here in the Road America circuit, a wonderful track and I quite enjoy just jumping on this track every now and again and just trying to take it rather easy as the AI either crashes out or just makes life a little bit harder for myself so starting from uh, the middle of the group, we're going to try and take it easy and just uh, try and beat the AI, of course, on the hardest difficulty, but the AI never is really that hard in Ride 4 as we manoeuvre to the right hand side of Lotta Honkinen on board this wonderful, wonderful Ducati from Troy Bayliss, of course. So, massive shout out to Sergio23, another terrific livery from you, my friend. So, thank you very much for delivering this fantastic livery. It looks absolutely brilliant, oh, truly, truly brilliant, truly exactly the same. As a complete replica to what we've seen in the past, so great job from Sergio. And of course, guys, if you have any liveries you want me to do, let me know in the comment section down below, providing you're on PC, I can download them and then try them out for myself. If you're on console, unfortunately, I won't be able to do so because I don't actually have Ride 4 on console as of yet, and I probably won't. I think I'll keep it on PC. I rather enjoy playing it at uh, 120 frames per second. It's just so, so crisp, so smooth. With their Ride 4, I very much enjoy it, so I don't believe I will ever shift across to uh, to console, but for PC, definitely staying on here for now as we get in behind Ryan Andrews, waiting for the lunge, and there we go, flying up on the inside, going into the kink for the 11th corner of the Road America. Had to be very careful there, actually, I felt the bike wobble a little bit going onto the right-hand side, but thankfully, we're still on board this wonderful motorcycle. Now, apparently, I've never used the Ducati 996 RM, which I pretty certain I did, so potentially maybe I've bought another one, maybe, I'm not entirely sure, but this Ducati feels fantastic. This is a real pleasure to use and to, to ride aggressively. It's a very, very friendly bike as well, actually. I was surprised how easy it was to ride because some of the Ducatis in this game can be quite brutal and can really offer a certain challenge, but I also did notice that the assists were turned on, so maybe it was time to turn them off and then give it another go. I actually recorded this one after the uh, weekly challenge which was, of course was the Southern 100 and that required a bit of additional electronics because that was an absolute bugger. The Suta 500 MMX I believe it's called that was a nightmare in the Southern 100, it really was. I didn't have too much trouble myself but it was trying to give a guide to the newcomers and give a guide to the people who might not be as experienced and to try and break it down for you in such a quick circuit it was very difficult to uh, to try and offer some assistance, but I believe I helped some, so that's all that really matters. And honestly, it was a great track, but the combination of the Southern 100 and the Suter was just oh, very, very difficult. I, I have no idea how Milestone are going to go any worse than that one, because that, <laughs> that was absolutely brutal. Personally, for me, I mean, it took me a couple of attempts to get right myself, and I only did maybe two or three laps of actually good laps, and the rest of them I just decided to make as... Uh, as actual guides for you guys because of course that's the most important part about the weekly challenge it doesn't really matter if I get top spot or third or whatever the most important thing is to just try and help you guys out of course we're now into the carousel for the right hand side for turn 9 just approaching half past 9 19 degrees in this wonderful sunny weather Frank Jordan will be next on our list coming out of the final corner uh, coming out of the corner of the uh, the final part of the carousel I believe and then onto the right hand side around the outside actually this time for the kink for turn 11, as we now go past Frank Jordan, we have a classic Czech fella, Lukas Sukup. I can never pronounce his name properly, but there you go. That's my attempt with Mr. Sukup on the right hand side for Canada Corner for turn 12. And so the lap time's here, roughly around two minutes. So, of course, still got a bit left in this particular lap, but I do believe we're going to have a pop at Lukas Sukup either on the straight or going into the right hand here for turn 14. Not close enough this time, but when we get into the straight, you better believe we're going to certainly pick up enough speed to get past Mr. Sukup. Oh, and look at the speed we did pick up going up on the inside. Very close there to touching the grass, but we managed to get through without any issue whatsoever. So now going on to the braking zone. If you do have trouble with the braking zone here in Road America, just be very gentle on the front brake. You can see in the bottom right corner of your screen there the gauge on the actual front brake that I was pulling. Very, very gentle, very, very controlled, pushing the rider backwards into the seat as well, making sure all the weight is on the rear of the tyre and not the front, because of course if it's on the front, you're going to endo and you're going to have a very, very bad time. 
So now onto the big long straight going into the left hand, a very difficult part of the track here that I would have always advised, breaking amongst the uh, shadows of the trees there, and that gives you a chance to get into the left hand side for turn 5, nice and tight to the apex. Now of course I did turn off the uh, electronics and this bike feels much better to use now. It feels better but also feels a little bit more risky, you know you have to be a little bit more careful coming out of some of the corners, I do feel like there's a potential wheelie bound to happen once or twice but it's right for now, it's pretty good. So we have Shinji Kanazawa ahead of us and Pedro Amadeus, Rock Me Amadeus in first place. That's up in there, the Portuguese man. As so we go into the carousel once again. Right hand side, just holding the throttle. Look on the right hand side of your screen there, guys. That's how much throttle I'm holding. From 50% on the controller, just holding it and waiting for that point just to absolutely launch the throttle. Unleash hell as we get on the right hand side, going into the kink with Shinji Kanazawa ahead of us. Can we get past Shinji on this corner? It's probably going to happen sooner rather than later. Maybe we'll go up on the inside of the brakes. This is a firm braking manoeuvre with the head of the Ducati. The Ducati, oh, the Ducati was holding firm, but not firm enough. As uh, Ducati Troy Bayliss 996 from Imola 2001 makes his way up on through. Controlled by Dot Trace, of course. As we now go on the right-hand side for turn 14. Maybe we'll get in the slipstream and maybe we'll just because absolutely wild. Maybe I'll hang on. I'm not entirely sure. I'll tell you what, slipstream it is. Let's get past. And let's, ch let's start chucking in some incredibly fast lap times. Look at the speed we pick up there. It's a 204.934 for Troy Bayliss already into first position. Now breaking into first corner, nice and gentle, nice and in control. We go for the right hand and be very careful here. There's a every now and again if you go close to that rumble strip, the game likes to give you a wheelie, and I don't know exactly why that happens. Maybe it's because you touch the rumble strip and. Maybe the front just gets a little bit out of shape and lifts, I'm not entirely sure. But for some reason, just be very, very careful there if you are going to touch the rumble strip on the exit of Turn 1. Sometimes you can be hit with an unexpecting wheelie, which can certainly throw you off, so be very, very careful coming out of Turn 1. But now onto the left-hand side for Turn 5, nice and tight to the apex. I've run it a little bit deep there, but you can use that rumble strip. Unfortunately, it's not painted, so it does look like, uh, because it's not painted, it does kind of look like you're not supposed to use it, but you can do. There's no penalty given for using that particular rumble strip. As we, ooh, massive, massive moment there on the right-hander. Really, really close to losing the front into turn seven. I genuinely felt like the bike was going to go there, but thankfully the bike has uh, stayed up and we're all right. I actually thought that was going to come to an end then. It certainly felt like it, but thankfully I just slowed it down and just tried to fight it, ride the waves, ride the momentum of the bike, and. Thankfully we got things under control as we go underneath the Road America sign. Right hand side once again for turn 11, the kink. Those uh, knee sliders are going to be a bit worn on the right hand side for the uh, Revit leathers we've got on right now as we go on the left hand side. Breaking here just as the, uh, the kink starts to develop itself and starts to slow down. That's when the Canada corner is easiest to tackle. Or at least it is for me as we get on the left hand side using the rumble strip on the right hand side as a bit of a guide. Of course, uh, by the way guys, thank you very much for everyone's comments regarding the top 10 Ride 4 lists that I've got to do. I've now got a massive list of Ride 4 content to do, and I couldn't be happier because of course more content means more videos, Ride 4 means more playing time, so <laughs> it's all good stuff around, and of course you guys enjoy Ride 4 pretty much as much as I do, and I'm more than happy to make more content, and I'm very eager to see your guys' opinions on the top 10s that I do, and I'm always eager to see if you agree or disagree with my top 10s, of course, if you do have any more top 10 suggestions, either comment on that community post or even let me know in this video in the comments section down below. Either or is absolutely fine by me. And of course, if you are enjoying the video so far, why not hit the like button and even consider subscribing as well. It does great for the channel and of course, really helps me out in the future as well. But back to business as we go into the left hander for turn 5, breaking down, down to first gear into the left hand. Now, of course, you can tackle that with second gear if you want to, but I do tend to drop it down to first myself as we go into the Corvette corner for turn six. Very easy corner to get wrong. It's uh, an innocuous corner. It really is. You get in there too hot and you can completely mess up your chances of even trying to attempt the next corner. It's a tough one to get right and probably one of those corners that probably needs a little bit more of a guide to do. Maybe I'll, I'll tackle the Road America and give it a guide at some point. But now into uh, turn 9 for the carousel, going into the right hander, holding the right acceleration, the right trigger, just gently, just holding it gently, and then finally 
bringing on the power. It's that sort of reward for being patient on the acceleration to then release it and then go absolutely wild on the throttle and just pick up so much speed, going up to about 170 miles an hour before braking here. In fact, we managed to reach about 174 as we go hard on the brakes, run it a little bit wide for the Canada corner, pushing way more than we were just a moment ago. But of course, I am trying to get now the fastest lap. Might try and do a wheelie towards the end, I'm not sure. It's going to be a difficult corner to get because you're going to be wheeling uphill. That will be very impressive and I'm not entirely sure I can get that done. And I do want to see what my fastest lap time is going to be. But will I not have a little bit of a wheelie at very least? But I'm still superstitious. I don't like to wheelie too much because I do believe karma will come and get me at some point. I'm going to wheelie and I'm going to end up falling flat on my face. But victory goes to Troy Bayliss, or for us right now. And that is going to be a very successful Grand Prix. Now let's take a look at the actual livery itself. Let's have a little bit of a spin around in the garage so you guys can get a better look. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video, and of course, big thank you to Sergio23. Look at this beautiful job he has done with the Troy Bayless Ducati from Imola 2001. But guys, on the note, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Race upload. Thanks for watching, and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.